Welcome back guys, moving on to the next example with function notation. If f of x is x squared minus 3x minus 10, determine the value or values for x when part a, when f of x is equal to 8, or part b, when f of x is equal to negative 6. So notice that these questions are a little bit different than the previous video. So in the previous video, we were seeing stuff like f of 8. We had to find the value of the function or the y value when x was equal to 8. So in this case, we would just plug in 8 for x. So we'd have 8 squared, which is 64, minus 3 times 8, which is 24, minus 10. So this would be 64 minus 24, which is 40, minus 10 is 30. So f of 8 would be 30. But they're not asking for f of 8. They're asking for f of x or they're asking for the x value when f of x is equal to 8. So here, in this example, you are given x, and you have to find the corresponding y value. In this case, you are given the y value, and you have to find x. All right, so just make a note on the difference between these two. This is not even a question in this video, but I thought I would bring it up first just so you see the difference, right? So the way you do this is uh, you could rewrite this function, and I'm going to just rewrite it actually as y equals x squared minus 3x minus 10. So they're asking for the x values when the function is equal to 8 or when the y value is equal to 8. So you're plugging in 8 for y. And then notice, you could bring the 8 over, so you'd be left with a 0 on the left side. Uh, this positive 8 turns into negative, so you'd have x squared minus 3x, and then negative 10 minus 8 gives you negative 18. So now notice, this is just a quadratic equation that you could solve. And if you remember from the previous grade, you could solve this with factoring, or you could solve it with the quadratic formula. So this actually factors smoothly into x minus 6, x plus 3. I'm not going to go into too much detail how this factoring works. You may have to review that from the previous grade. We're also going to be doing an entire chapter on quadratics, so I'll be reviewing factoring in that chapter. But basically, this factors into that. And then from here, you can tell that x minus 6 is going to equal 0 when x is equal to 6, or x plus 3 is going to equal 0 when x is equal to negative. So those are your two answers. Basically, x can be negative 3 or x is 6. So at those two x values, the value of the function is going to be 8. And you could check your answer. You could take 6, plug it in to the function, and see if you get 8. So 6 squared minus 3 times 6, which is 36 minus 18, which is 18 minus 10, gives us 8. If we plug in negative 3 for x, negative 3 squared is 9. Negative 3 times negative 3 is uh, positive 9. So 9 plus 9 is 18. Minus 10 gives us 8. So you can always check your answers as well. Then same thing here. Find the x values when f of x is negative 6. So again, we got y equals x squared minus 3x minus 10. Plug in negative 6 for y. And then we're going to solve for the x values. The way you do that, bring the negative 6 over. Uh, negative 10 plus 6, this turns into a positive 6 when you bring it over, is uh, negative 4. And then this, you could throw in the quadratic formula, but it actually factors smoothly into x minus 4, x plus 1. So this is going to be x minus 4 equals 0. That happens when x is equal to 4. And then this is going to be x plus 1 is equal to 0. That happens when x is equal to negative 1. So those are the two answers for part B. Now you can also show how this scenario looks visually on a graph. So for part A, we got the x value 6 and negative 3, which means that this function here has coordinates 6 and 8 and negative 3 and 8. So I'm going to erase this over here. And then for part B, Basically, we found these two x values, 4 and negative 1, so that means 
4 and negative 6 is a coordinate on the function, negative 1 and 6 is a coordinate on the function. So if you actually take this function and graph it, uh, so we got y equals x squared minus 3x minus 10. This actually factors smoothly into x minus 5, x plus 2. So it is easy to find the x-intercepts, right? When y is 0, x minus 5 would be 0, so that would give us an x-intercept of 5. This would be an x-intercept of negative 2. So we got negative 2 over here. We got positive 5 over here. So this is a quadratic. That's going to look something like that. Uh, you know what, actually, let's, uh, let's make this quadratic go a little bit further out like this. Same thing here, just because I want to show this a little better. So what's happening, 6 and 8 is going to be where? So an x value of 6 and then a y value of 8. So this is 6 and 8 there. And then over here, a y value of 8 is also going to happen at an x value of negative 3. So this coordinate here is negative 3 and 8. Right? So that's how you could show it visually. So we have the x coordinates that we solve for and then the corresponding y coordinate that we were given. And then here, same thing, we got uh, 4, negative 6, negative 1, negative 6. So 4 is here, an x value 4. Uh, x value negative 1 is here, so drawing a dotted line down. This should be symmetrical somewhat. Sorry, it's not really symmetrical, but it should be. And this is happening at a y value of negative 6. So this coordinate here is negative 1, negative 6, and then this coordinate here is 4 and negative 6, right? These coordinates. So that is the parabola, and that's how these coordinates are shown visually. So whenever you're dealing with stuff like this, you're basically, if you're dealing with numbers, not expressions, then you're just basically dealing with coordinates on a function.